The Illinois Veterans History Project, in conjunction with the Library of Congress Veterans History Project, invites Illinois citizens and communities to honor our patriots, the brave men and women who have fought to preserve our cherished freedoms. The Illinois State Library, a division of the Office of Secretary of State Jesse White, and the Illinois Network of Talking Book and Braille Services presents a salute to veterans. This is about story. This is about story and history. Who went where and when? What they did. Why they went where they went. And what happened to them? All the names you see represent patriots, so many of them from Illinois. Novelists and filmmakers imagine wartime experiences. Historians chronicle the event. The media reports the news from the front. For every man or woman fighting on land, sea, or in the air, families back home wait. Communities wait for news of their loved ones, their splendid, shining soldiers. But for every incident reported, many more personal stories remain untold, heartfelt, stirring remembrances that time and the ages have not dimmed. The sum of these stories makes up our history, our rich and varied heritage. Let us join together to encourage those who have not yet told their stories to share their memories with us so the generations to come will know of their heroic efforts. This is about Illinois stories. The Illinois Digital Archives, museums, and families preserve precious stories through diaries, journals, memoirs, and letters written to loved ones. June 6, 1944. CP in a villa. My darling, I'm sitting on a cot in my CP in a pretty white Italian villa. The entire house has screens and unbroken windows. There's a courtyard, swimming pool, and veranda. I took a bath in the swimming pool this morning. When Chow's ready, we heard the cook's bell in the kitchen and go inside to eat at a table with chairs. Our coats are on coat racks. Just got news of the invasion. Wow! We're doing all right here, too. We've moved five times in 36 hours. So fast, we've not been able to dig the guns in. And we're now 45 miles behind our division, awaiting orders to move up. Finito, nice villa. Jerry was in this villa yesterday, so you can get an idea of the speed. When we pass through Rome, six hours behind the enemy, crowds tied up traffic. Civilians were yelling and laughing and waving and clapping and throwing roses at us. Fortunately, some stories have already been captured with veterans recording their own experiences. West Drysdale. I was stationed on Okinawa in the 5th Air Force, and I was with the 3rd Air Commando Group. And at the end, when the bombs were dropped, the atomic bombs, we knew the war was over. So we just all breathed a sigh of relief because we were all prepared to go into Japan. 
So they uh, said, well, we don't need our airplanes, which we had, and our bombers, because the war is over. I thought, well, I'll be going home. No. They said, you're going to be in about the fifth airplane that flies into Japan as soon as we get a airstrip cleared. I was in the photography department. We went photographers there to record historical things. I was selected out of our photography group to go in, and we landed at Atsugi, which is right out of Yokohama. And they said, now, the first thing you'll probably be seeing is General MacArthur fly in. And we went to the photographers there first. So we didn't have any place to stay except in a bombed out hangar. And there were four of us. So that's where we set up camp. And the Japanese knew that we were going to be photographing some historical documents. They asked permission if they could come and send a photographer there. And we said yes. Well, when General MacArthur's plane landed and the door opened, and, you know, there's a platform here and then a lot of steps going down to the ground. You've seen the uh, president descend from his plane, <laughs> similar. Well, he came out on the platform with his corn cob pipe and his hat with all the scrambled eggs on it. And he stood there surveying the outfit. We kept taking pictures, you know, and nothing for him to look at. It was just a big old vacant field. Pretty soon, a fellow came over and said to me, what is your name? What have I done? He said, you haven't done anything. I just took your picture, and I wanted to make sure that I have your name for the caption of the picture if we use them. So that was the end of that. And then about a month later, while I was still in Japan, Time Magazine, next issue came out, and there was my picture standing next to a Japanese photographer, and we were shooting about the same type of camera. And the headline above the picture was the first time a Yank and a Jap were shooting at the same target. Our nation is losing World War II veterans at the staggering rate of 1,600 per day. Many of these heroes and those who fought in Korea, Vietnam, the Persian Gulf and elsewhere have never shared their wartime experiences so many stories from Illinois veterans still to be told. This is what the Illinois Veterans History Project is all about. Veterans and their families will fill out Patriot information forms detailing the stories of the men and women who served our nation. These forms will be preserved in the Illinois State Archives. The project is now being expanded to include oral recorded histories gathered by volunteers at local libraries throughout Illinois. You can help by collecting veteran stories. Ask them and their families to share their memories before any more of these invaluable stories are lost to us. Ask them and record their answers. For those who fought abroad, ask them why they went and where they went and what they did. Ask them what happened, whether they were fighting in cities, villages, or countryside, over, on, or under the seas, flying, or serving behind a desk, or in a factory, serving in a hospital ward, or field pharmacy. Some objected to fighting on religious or philosophical grounds. Ask them about their experiences as well. Each person who lived through these times contributes a piece of history when they tell their personal story. What was it like being a member of the Illinois War Council, becoming a WAC? a wave, a wasp, joining the nurse corps of the Army and Navy, or enlisting in other branches. Ask them what it felt like leaving home, if they faced difficult decisions about marriage or starting a family before they left for service. Ask them about their training, their leaves, the food they ate. For the last two weeks we've been eating K-rations and I've developed a new food that I call the K-burger. If the can is opened like this, a frying pan results. If it's heated until the cheese gets soft, that between slices of bread is a K-burger. But after two weeks, even a K-burger is less tasty. Ask them about the importance of receiving news from back home, how a treasured letter, package, or postcard enlightened their spirits. They will tell you. 
Many soldiers lived among people whose accents, skin color, and cultures were different from their own. Many traveled to faraway lands they never dreamed of seeing, dealt with harsh, brutal weather conditions in deserts and jungles, and tragically, many encountered death. I have a memory of a bad one. Charlie and I went through basic training together. There was an explosion. Charlie got burnt. It took him three days to die. I only regret that I never called his folks to tell him how he died. Ask them how they dealt with all of these challenges. They will tell you. And we mustn't forget the sacrifices and stories of the loved ones back home. Ask the parents, wives, and children what it was like seeing a family member off for the first time, holding the family together, waiting each day for the mail or the phone to ring. How did they contribute to the war effort at home? What was it like fighting the war from their backyards by planting a victory garden, purchasing war bonds, dealing with rationing and blackouts? Women filled the jobs that men vacated when they were called off to war. What happened to them after the men returned and reclaimed their jobs? The day that World War II ended, I worked at the telephone office. We were alerted by Associated Press to expect a big announcement. Every position at the board was filled, standing there with both hands ready to go. And when the announcement came over the radio, that board lit up like a Christmas tree. And that is something I'll never forget. We were saying, number please, number please. And everybody was calling everyone else to tell them the good news. We have so much to learn from these incredible experiences. The sum of these stories is our history. It is our vibrant, irreplaceable heritage. Step up and volunteer to schedule an individual interview with an Illinois veteran or civilian who experienced war on the home front. Become a part of the Illinois Veterans History Project. Ask them and they will tell you.